Hello, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how to graph histogram um, from data. So, uh, of course, you can do it by hand, <laughs> build a frequency table and then uh, into classes and then just do those bars by hand. But uh, we would want to use uh, two uh, software to help us to do it because uh, occasionally we'll have large data. Um, and also when you do the project, I want you to uh, graph the histogram by uh, one of this software. So the, the first one that you can use is Statdisk. And the second one that you're going to use is Google Sheets. Um, they have the pros and cons. We'll talk about it after I graph it. Uh, there is another videos uh, in the calculator link that talk about them individually. But in this video, I'll talk, talk about them together. So here's the procedure. Uh, basically, for Statdisk, you copy the data into uh, into stat this it has to be in a column if it's not in the column you can watch the other videos on how to convert data into a column or uh, enter the data manually in a column and then you um, graph you state you uh, click data histogram and you say uh, instead of auto feed you would use user defined and then you can select frequency or relative frequency so this is the procedures i'm going to show you in the oopsie in the um, that this uh, instead this after we log on. Mm. Okay, so I have some old data here. I'm going to clear it. So, for example, I want to graph um, in the notes. Um, I say I want to graph some data that is. Um, that I have a uh, set up in a file already. So the first example is this one. I'm going to do two examples. So the first example is this 22, 33. So these are all in a list, um, but I managed to enter them into a uh, Excel worksheet. So this is a commute time. I don't know how they distribute. I don't know where most of the data are. So I'm going to copy it, uh, highlight it, and then right click copy. And then you go to stat this, um, do control V to, cop to uh, paste the data into column one. Okay. If you want to, you can change the name of the column so you can see it, but you can just keep it as column one. After that, then you say, I want to graph. Uh, Bio. So these are, I have data. So you click data, histogram. Okay, click data and then uh, press histogram. Then in the histogram uh, uh, panel, you will select the data. It's in column one. And then you enter your title. So this is histogram of commute time, right? Histogram of commute time. Um, so you can say the x-axis are commute time in minutes, right? the y-axis are frequency, we don't have to change, and uh, we don't want it to use the default one, we want a user-defined one. So let's see, what did they say? We want to use a class width of 10, that means it would be, you know, 20, 30, 30, 40, like that, and the lowest value of 20. So it starts from 20 and then width is how each class goes. So class width is 10 and we start from 20. And 20 is a good number to choose because uh, the lowest number is 22. So it would include 22. Um, so I don't want to do percentage, I just want a frequency. So you you have an option of graphing either one. Um, uh, so there, if you say plot, you will have the histogram. Now, the difficult thing is if you look at the histogram here, the labels are not labeled well because they don't label each class properly. But if you hover over the bar, they do show it only when the, the cursor is on the bar, like 20 to 29, do you see? 30 to 39. So the labeling is a problem. But the good things about using is that this is you can do relative frequency. You get the 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 vertical axis can be percentage. See, this is 20 some percent, uh, 10 something percent, but again, the classes are hidden. So you have to go through them. 
and then they do okay so if you click over here and plot they do the frequency again they do talk about it they do show you the frequency okay if you hover over it so um, that's how you graph it so uh, what you do is you can copy it down um, all the classes by hovering over them so um, what what do I have um, 20 over 20 20 29 so we don't have to look at 29 we just do the second one 30 40 right so you know that this is 30 40 50 60 70 80 the last bar so the first one is 4 the second one is 7 third one is 4 and then the next one is 7 again and then the next one is 2 right so this is 7 4 7 and then 2 and then another one is 5 and 1 5 and 1 so you copy it down and then you would uh, sketch the histogram below okay label the axis um, so the first one start from 20 you don't have to like do 20 here you can just do 20 30 or the lowest limit 40 50 60 70 80 80 is the last class so that should be a 90 and so and, and then it goes up to seven so you would have seven four um two one three oh did i <laughs> five six is not very good <laughs> it's not very linear well grab by hand so if you want to you can do a cut and paste uh, of that uh, histogram so remember don't have space in between and the second one is seven right so that's what i expect from you uh, in your in your worksheets if you're doing it by hand you know you grab you uh, because it's a paper and it uh, uh, i think it it helps for you to understand how the histogram look like that bars are contiguous two is this right this is two and then i have a five and then the last one is one okay but this is not an outlier because it's all contiguous so this is commute time in minutes and the vertical axis is frequency and that's the free that's the uh, histogram it shows the distribution is this symmetrical is not symmetrical is this skill uh, I think that it has multiple peak right it's like by um, multimodal peak so does the histogram indicate possible outliers? No, uh, we don't see something that is far away from the rest. Okay, and the distribution is not very particular. The other one is a histogram of the number of customers in a sample of stores. Now, um, for this one, uh, they want a class width of eight and a class start at ten. Um, I want to use the other method, which is graph by Google Sheets, which you will use also. Uh, for your project so you copy the data in the column uh, just like when you do the categorical data you do insert chart choose histogram chart and then you adjust the bucket size bucket size is kind of like the um, lower limit no bucket size is the class width and then you adjust the uh, minimum of the horizontal uh, oh sorry minimum of the horizontal axis I would give you that so the way to do it is so I have all this data I can cut and paste it um, so if I um, if I you know no I cannot cut and paste it <laughs> um, so so I would just use the one that I have in the Excel file so but first of all I will uh, open up a blank Google Sheets so use a, a Google account you would have search Google Sheets you would have this just blank one and then um, make it a little bigger so you can see it a little easier and then you what you do is uh, I have typed this in in a file oh no it is the second one it's the customers 
copy this so yeah it's the 1234 do i have yeah 1244 number of customers that shows up in the shops or in the show in the store in different stores um and then i would paste it in against Control v or just uh yeah we'll just right click so all the data paste here and then you just do insert chart now when you do insert chart you don't got to choose oops sorry i didn't <laughs> I didn't choose the data. I have to choose the data first, like kind of select the data, and then use search chart. And then um, the uh, Google Sheet will try to guess what you want. They would, they think that you want a line graph, but we don't want it. We want a histogram. So you just scroll down, scroll down until you see. Is this a histogram? No. This is called combo chart. So if you hover over it, it would show. Oh, this look like a histogram. See, it's called histogram chart, right? You click on it oh now it shows so it's really nice okay you can see it nicer so you can see that um, the the good thing about the uh, google sheets histogram is the lower limits are set properly although there's some you know the the, the bar seems like not to be contiguous they are pretty good and um it, but then um there are a few things that they they don't allow you to do yet is you have to change the bucket size that means the class width right now the class width is from 10 to 26 like 16 which is kind of you know random so you go to a chart editor customize histogram so i'm going to do it again customize a histogram and um, you will see that it is doing auto bucket size you don't want it you say you want it to be 10 right because in our example we want the class width Oh no, we want a class width of 8 and a class start at 10. Class width of 8. Okay, so do that. Um, and then they, oops, they will change it right away. Okay, so you lost it, it you edit chart, it will come back. And then how do I uh, make it class start at 10? I want a class start at 10, right? Right now, they actually start at 10, so I don't have to adjust it. In case it doesn't start at what you want, what you need to do is customize um, the horizontal axis for minimum, okay? So this would be class start, because horizontally, this is the minimum. And then there you go. Okay, so you can you see how it would change. If you say, uh, I want a class start at zero, you can see that it will start from zero. But uh, we'll just do 10. Okay, so once you enter it, it would change. And it would show the distribution of the data. Is it quite symmetrical? I think it's quite symmetrical. Or, right, because the data is kind of in the middle, right? And But there seems to be one outlier. So this is a bar that is far away from the rest with gaps. So you can see that um, by graphing a histogram, you can see um, if you just look at the data, you can figure out really what it is about about the distribution of the data so this is just dancing in front of your eye but once you grab it you see oh i get a feeling as the the, the spread of the the data now they are all concentrate kind of in the middle and the high end and there is one really really low one that is seems to be an outliers okay so uh to finish the whole thing i'm going to copy it um so i would have 10 to 20 that is a uh, one, but 30 to 40 is two, and then 40 to 50, uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then I have, and this is uh, four, four, and then I have one, uh, one, two, one, one, two, one, which is 80 to 90. So I'm going to copy it over here. Oh, no, they are not. How come my bucket size become 10 again? Let me go back, set up. Hmm. I don't think I, I want my bucket size to be that way, right? So customize. Yeah, I don't want my bucket size to be 10. I want it to be 8, right? Oh, it changed back. Hmm. What happened? So and then I do 8. Right, I think you have to make it like that. So actually... It would be 10 to 18, 34, 42. So uh, what I what I can do is I can just copy and paste it and then put it in the uh, over here. Okay. So manually copy it over. 
by writing the uh, 10 to 18, right? 10 to 18 and then 34 to 42, like that. So that's